Now I'm going to give you a visual example of the distributive property. And a lot of algebraic concepts, virtually every algebraic concept that we look at, can also be shown geometrically. And the, ge the geometry dealing with the physical shapes is sometimes easier to see. So I'll show you a picture that will show you the distributive property in geometrical terms that you can visualize. Okay, remember the formula for the area of a rectangle. Area is length times width. So if you have a rectangle, there's a certain width and a certain length, and the area, the surface that it covers, is equal to the length times the width. Now imagine two rectangles. One of them is A times B, so I'll draw a little picture like this, and if you're taking notes on the written page, you can draw this in. This is A, and that's B. So what we mean is this length here is A, and this length here is B. So the area of this rectangle is A times B. And draw another rectangle that's A times C. So it's going to have the same width, A, but we'll make a different length here in this dimension. So this is A, and that's C. So this A and this A are the same. That's why we call them both A. But C here is different from the B. And the area of this rectangle is A times C. Now, imagine taking these two rectangles and sliding them together so that this gap in between them is gone. So let's imagine them bumped right up against each other like this. So here's the first one. That length is A and that's B, and then we have the second one scooted up right here, so this length right here is C, and this area is A times C. So you could think of these as two pieces of wood, for example, two pieces of plywood, two boards or something, and they have a certain total area, this area plus this area, and that area is going to be the same regardless of whether we have a gap in between them or not. So this area plus that area has to be the same as it is on, on the left side over here, this plus this. So if we put them together to form a single rectangle, we can call this one rectangle here a rectangle of width A across this way and a length this way uh, B plus C. So the total area here is going to have to be A times B plus C. In other words, the width times the length, or length times the width. One times the other will give you the total area. So the total area has to be the same here and here. So we can say that these two areas, AB, and I'll, I'll write it, AB plus this area, AC, has to equal this area, A times B plus C, that total area. And that is the distributive property. You can see that AB plus AC is the same as A times B plus C. This is the same as if we had taken this A and multiplied it by the B to give us the AB and multiplied it by the C to give us the AC. And, um, I just put all this up here because hopefully this uh, visual picture with the shapes helps you see this a little bit more clearly. Or perhaps helps you see that it is necessarily the case every single time. There's another handy little thing you can do with the distributive property. Some problems, some arithmetic problems, where you have to actually do the computation add or multiply or something like that. Sometimes these are made easier by the distributive property. So look at this, 5 times 43. And suppose we need to do this and we don't have a calculator handy and you haven't memorized your multiplication table all the way up to 43, which most of us haven't, including myself. So actually multiplying it out isn't that hard, but it is some actual work. You have to sit down, pull out a pencil, actually multiply 5 times 43. But watch this. Instead of 5 times 43, I could think of this as 5 times 40 plus 3, okay? Because 43 here is clearly the same as 40 plus 3. And so that's going to be 5 times 40 plus 5 times 3. And 5 times 40 is 200, and 5 times 3 is 
15 and that's 215 so without a calculator I did that and you say well I, I still had to, to write all this out but actually you don't have to these computations are all really simple and with just a little bit of practice you can do all of this in your head watch this I've erased it and I'll just talk you through it 5 times 43 is 5 times 40 plus 3 so that's going to be 5 times 40 plus 5 times 3 and if you can remember that if you can keep that in your brain at one time 5 times 40 plus 5 times 3 you can think okay 5 times 40 is 200 5 times 3 is 15 so 215 that's 215 and you've got it so without a calculator and without a pencil and paper this technique can make some problems easy enough to do in your head this next one is very similar 6 times 7.5 and I'll write it out to, to show you the thought process. 6 times 7.5 could be thought of as 6 times 7 plus 0.5 because the 7.5 is exactly that, 7 plus 0.5. So let's distribute the 6. 6 times 7 plus 6 times 0.5. And both of these are pretty easy. 6 times 7 is 42 and 6 times 0.5 that's 3 because 0.5 is a half just think of it as half of 6 so that's 3 and then 42 plus 3 is 45 and that's our answer and I don't think it's particularly easy to see at a glance that 6 times 7.5 is going to work out to 45 but with a little bit of practice with the distributive property we can do something like this and again I would I would uh, go so far as to say that you could do something like that in your head without too much trouble Here's a couple of other examples. 8 times 5 and a quarter. This could be thought of as 8 times 5 plus a quarter. And that would be 8 times 5 plus 8 times 1 fourth. And 8 times 5 is 40. And 8 times a fourth is 2. And 40 plus 2 is obviously 42. Now this example over here, 14 times 1.85 plus 14 times 0.15. This one's really easy, but if you started to work all this out, this is a good bit of work. 14 times 1.85 and 14 times 0.15. Both of those are uh, some fairly lengthy multiplication problems. But if I recognize that this could be written as 14 times 1.85 plus 0.15, the problem's going to get a lot simpler really quickly. Notice how I got from here to here. I'm just undistributing the 14, and, and we're, we're really factoring out the 14, and we'll do a lot more with factoring later on. But notice that I, if I had 14 times this, that would be that, plus 14 times that, the 0.15, that would be that. And these numbers happen to add up very easily. 1.85 plus 0.15 is 2. So this is the same as 14 times 2 and 14 times 2 is 28 and that's a lot easier and faster than multiplying all this out and adding them up and if, if, if you reduce your work required to get an answer again you reduce the opportunity of making a mistake if you multiplied all this out there's a lot of steps involved there and a lot of steps involved here and then some steps involved in adding them together and each step along the way is an opportunity opportunity to make a mistake and any one mistake will ruin your answer. So if you can simplify the problem, if you can come up with an approach like this that simplifies the problem and makes it less work, then it also makes it faster and more accurate. So that's a, that's a preferred method in a case like this. And one more quick topic here, using the distributive property to simplify expressions. Uh, in this case, we have 4 times 2 plus x minus 7 if we distribute here, this is 4 times 2, which is 8, plus 4 times x, which I'll write as 4x, and then we have the minus 7. And the 8 and the minus 7 can be combined here into a 1. So this is just 1 plus 4x. And we would typically write that as 4x plus 1. 4x plus 1. And uh, one more example here. 3a times 2 plus a times 5. We're distributing from the right here, which is fine. 
Um, that's a plus sign right here, and so is that. Okay, we're going to keep this 3a plus, and then I distribute. This is 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 5 times a. And the 3a and the 5a can get combined into an 8a. So I end up with 8a plus 10 is my answer. And that's a simpler way to write this. This is mathematically equivalent to what was given originally, but this is simplified, and the simplified form is generally preferred.